happening? Welcome to the program. We're, uh, we're live. We're coming to you in just a couple of seconds. About a minute late. Shane Matthews on the line here. It's your fault. He'll be joining us momentarily. Uh, and uh, stand by. The Buddy Martin Show is about to be on the air. On the air. Tell your friends and neighbors. It's time again for Buddy Martin. Call him up and tell him what you're thinking. But be kind because he's doing the best he can. Better. Stronger. Faster. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. Hey, what if the voice calls while you're gone? Take a message. <laughs> Bye. You ready, champ? I'm ready for this my whole life. I'm incapable of small talk. <laughs> but that's why you love me, right? Kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. Welcome to the program. I'm Buddy Martin. He's not, and we've got a lot of stuff for you tonight. Brendan Martin joining the program in the Orange and Blue Room. It's Shane Matthews standing by in just a moment. SEC Media Days. I, I just can't get into it, Brendan. I don't get the feeling. I texted Paul Feinbaum, is it me, or is it just hard to get into SEC Media Days? Today they had three coaches there, and uh, we'll tell you all some of the things they said, but uh, – I don't know if it's just me or the summer or the heat, whatever it is. Probably the heat. Could be. Let's go right to the orange and blue room. We'll put our spot on hold for a second. We were late getting to it. And talk to our good friend, Shane Matthews. What's up, Coach? How we doing? There's the the Martin boys. There we are. What's up, Shane? (laughs) I don't know. uh, Did you watch any of the SEC media days? Did you get into it? No. No. Why not? Because he doesn't do that. He's cool. Well, I got stuff going on. During the day, I'm yeah. echoing. Can y'all hear me echoing? No. We'll deal. We'll deal with it. Yeah, we um, don't hear you. It's working okay for us. No, I was gone most of the day, buddy. I didn't see any of it. What I did see was our good friend Chris Doring going through the Charlotte Airport to Nashville in his LSU baseball uniform. Yeah, black. another lost bet, right? It was hilarious. Another lost bet. He's getting beat like a drum. One of those bets. Yeah. So yeah, I saw some of that. Uh, good sport. Chris is a good sport, and he has a good time doing it. He's gotten really a whole lot better at his job, too, I will say. Well, all right, we're going to pretend like it is the start of football season, okay. even though it doesn't feel like it. But it kind of is. I mean, it kind of is like, isn't it like the, the kickoff a little bit? I mean, it's like it's like you can feel that it's close. Well, it's closer. It's like December 1st before Christmas. <laughs> Maybe. But, I mean, look, I'm going to confess it could be me. I, I, but I did text Feinbaum today and say, is it me or was this tough? He said, no, it was hard. Even he said it was a struggle. I don't know. Not so It's been in Nashville before, so it's not the first time there. Maybe. I thought it was the first time. I, I thought I heard it was the first time in Nashville. Maybe not. I don't believe so. But anyway, the point is it's been uh, Atlanta, Nashville. Uh, we, here's the shocker in a way. But Shane, this is the price of getting old. You don't know quite that all yet, but. Next year's Media Days is in Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth. I, I, I'm having a hard time with that, Brendan. Dallas, I mean, Shane, does that feel funny to you? Oh, no question. But that's where we are, OU Texas. Uh, those folks, they'll be excited out there for SEC coaches rolling into that area of the country. I know it is. I know it's inevitable. I don't mean to be an obstructionist here, but I got to tell you, I heard somebody do a piece today. I forgot who it was on the show. Wish I could remember uh, about well, the old days. Remember the days back when there were four playoff teams. <laughs> yeah, remember there were two divisions in the SEC. I don't want to get the SEC to be hijacked by these former Southwest Conference teams, Big Eight, uh, Big Twelve, etc. I get it. They bring a lot to the party, but I don't. Is it me? Let's ask some of you folks out there. Do you feel like maybe this is just a little much too soon? I mean, are they taking over the joint or what? I don't know. Shane, am I crazy or what? No, I mean, times have changed, buddy. You talk about – remember the days when every college football game was played at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? And, oh, man. 
And we started on that. People actually went to the games, and you couldn't watch it on TV. So, yeah, things things are different. No question. I had a thing. I'm not going to go old school today. I know people are saying, oh, come on now. Yeah, buddy, this is 2023. 20, Get with the program. And, and I, listen, I, I got to say, I'm guilty as charged. You know me, Shane. We've been doing this stuff together for a couple of years. I've said for 30 years, let's have a playoff system. Let's have more teams. Let's shrink it down. Now I'm afraid maybe we got something we might not want. And it feels a little odd to me. I'm going to work on my attitude, Shane. Promise you you'll help me, all right? I will help you. All right. So did you, I guess <coughs> the news, excuse me, if there was any news out there today, um, and, and I use the term loosely because really, to be honest with you, I'm listening to those coaches talk. It's like this in my I'm not. I'm spoiled. Okay, I had the HBC who made it funny, entertaining, clear, and not. Listen, Eli Drinkwitz. He admittedly openly said, "He's. I'm going to try to filibuster so I don't have I, to answer any questions." You hear that? I, t- I, t- I take that back. I did see that. Some. Yeah. I was gone all day. I come home. I did turn it on because I forgot yeah. SEC, and I saw Eli up there. I didn't see him when he started. But he's just rambling off on, we signed this guy. Yeah. We signed these left tackles. We signed these punters. And he's telling us about his entire roster. Yeah. And he was doing it on purpose to waste time because yeah. I guess they only have a certain amount of time up there for sports writers like you, buddy, to ask him crazy questions. For filibusters. I haven't been asking one for quite some time. I do remember, however, then you could ask a question. I heard one question. Someone said to Eli Drinkwitz, who's kind of a forward-thinking guy, I mean, honestly, he used some terms I didn't quite understand in football anymore. Anyway, but they asked him, do you, how do you think the AI will be used uh, for defensive schemes? And he said, I don't know. He, said, he wasn't going to try it. It's a valuable <laughs> question, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, and the other thing is these are small things. Why is it necessary for every guy to always say where he's from every time? They take five seconds. I have Joe Blow from Chicago. Who cares? Are you- Oh, you're talking about the sports reporter? Yeah. I mean, what do you have? Well, I, I think they do that because I know what they do. They're, they're used to their beat writers, so they know those guys. But if Buddy yeah. Martin stands up and you're talking to, you know, let's say Brent Venables next year, he ain't going to know who the hell Buddy Martin is. You're going to say, I'm Buddy Martin from Ocala, Florida, GatorBaitMedia.com. Why would he care? He care. They'd be like, why in the hell is that Gator guy asking yeah. me a question when yeah. I'm Oklahoma well, coach? I mean, I'm just saying, some guys love to hear their name, and, and they say it every. They get up and ask four questions just to get their name on national. Hi, Brandon Martin with GatorBaitMedia.com. Yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, here to ask the question. Yeah. It's like they're the press corps yeah. at uh, at the White House. Brendan's an old veteran of. He went to Birmingham. Birmingham, but you a couple you went times. back in like the second or third, whatever, wait, long time ago. I want to say what year? What year was that? 2006, maybe. So, oh, eight. 2008. Was it eight? Yeah. Anyway, so look, I'm always glad when the SEC Media Days is here. It means the beginning of football season. And you know we like that, Shane. That's a good thing. Yes. So, um, I, I looked through some of the preseason all-SEC teams. Uh, Florida gets a mentioned one or two players, especially Princely U, whatever his last name is, the edge rusher, and, of course, Jason Marshall seem to be the prize picks. And a little later on, there's a, uh, Travis Etienne and – uh, Montreal Johnson get named, but not a lot of names on there you recognize. But Shane, uh, even you, a non recruit Nick, have to admit that you read enough to see that there's stuff going on recruiting, Brendan. A lot of things happen, popping. You've been involved in with your guys, Matt and Kyle, and just a lot of stories lately about recruiting in a positive way, Shane. Yeah, they're, they're having a hell of a year, buddy, and it's going to continue. Just imagine if Florida puts together a pretty solid football year this year, wins a bunch of games, how that's going to help recruiting. So I, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I mean, you got to tip your hat to Billy Napier and the entire staff, what they've done. Well, I know it doesn't count for this year because these are all the 24 teams. What a great job, DJ Lagway, who, by the way, is going to be on with our friend Allie this week. She's going to have him on and interview him. We'll talk to Allie on Wednesday night. But they've got a good-looking bunch of kids. And now none of these kids will play in 2023. But, Shane, I'm a believer in the old cliche, a rising tide raises all ships. 
maybe that will give them a little more of a positive attitude, Brendan, about recruiting and some of the people that you you get tired of hearing talk for chain will perk up and say, you know what, there's hope for the future, right? I think there's a lot of hope. You know, I, I'm i hanging my hat on, buddy. You know, people people that put on podcasts and, and, and do different types of things, they look at data, right? Mm-hmm. You want to see the data, the whatever. Okay, the data tells you last year the best players for the Florida Gators Billy Napier was responsible for putting them in the orange and blue uniform. Best players, right, on the team? Would you say yes or no? Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Trust their process in evaluating players. Yes, the 24 class is great. They brought in some pretty good players for 23, plus they added in the transfer portal. I'm telling you, this team is going to be a lot better than the so-called experts out there. Well, you're down for eight games. Now you've said minimal, numerous, minimal way. Right yeah. You're thinking you feel why are you feeling so positive? Just what to well, turn it for you? There's two teams, in my opinion, that are better than them on paper. Georgia and LSU. A lot of things have to go your way to beat those two teams. Everybody else, Utah is outstanding. I think they're twenty six and two in their last twenty eight home games. But it's still Utah. Very well coached team. They're very good. We can beat them. Florida State is a very average team getting so much love, it just blows my mind. They're not going to win the ACC. Clemson's going to win it. And when you look at Kentucky, South Carolina, Missouri, Vanderbilt, better than they are. I don't care what happened last year. We beat Missouri. We beat South Carolina. We lost to Kentucky and Vanderbilt. None of that matters. But I'm telling you right now, I am. I firmly believe that Florida will win a minimum of eight games. Hmm. Well, that's positive, and well, do you think Shane? Because we were, it was a, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking to Urban Meyer, and I'm being a Colorado guy, uh, we're born in, or not born, but raised up there. How, how much do you think that altitude affects the first game, coming from sea level, going into a place like Salt Lake or close to Salt Lake? Uh, you know, playing a, a ferocious home, you know, a team that's what they said, twenty six and two. In the last uh, 28 home games, uh, do you think that makes a big difference, even psychologically? Because I know even when I go back to Colorado now, I feel the difference, you know, going back to 5,280 feet. We're going higher than that. Well, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of history of going to Utah. Now, I played a few, t- few times in Denver, but we didn't prepare any differently. And I don't know how much higher – Utah is than Denver. I don't. I don't know all that stuff. Well, Denver's a mile high. Yeah, fifty-two yeah. eighty. Yeah. So it, it, it's going to be an issue. But nowadays, and Billy Napier leaves no stone unturned. They're going to prepare the best way they possibly can before they go out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I I wouldn't know because I didn't grow up in the mountains. I don't visit the mountains very often. Is it more difficult going there than it was for Utah to come to the humidity? in Florida last year. That's a good point. Uh, now, I think I, it depends on the month you come here. Yeah. If you come here in, in October, it's not a big deal, but if you come here yeah. in August, well, that, yes. And this is a good question for Shane, because I don't know the answer, but do, do, because do, I know that you, you know, you can go and travel, you can take, I think it's called Vidox or whatever, but it's like, you know, a, a medicine that helps you with altitude. Do, does a team, does a team do something like that? Or they don't, they don't, they don't do that. They, you know, they might, I'm not aware. I mean, I'll find out if they're, Taking this stuff on the team, pl- I don't know, you know, out on the team plane. That makes but, a huge difference. But when I was yeah. in the National Football League, when we played in Denver and those type of places, we didn't do anything. It's no different when I was playing with the Buffalo Bills. Everybody talks about the Bills and the Patriots going to play down in Miami. We didn't change our week at all. Yeah. You know, you drink a little bit more water, try to hydrate as much as you can. So I don't know what how they're going to prepare for the altitude, but yeah. I, I know for a fact Billy Napier have some kind of plan. Well, I looked it up just so you know. Uh, Salt Lake City is at 4,265 so feet, and then Denver is 5,280 so, feet. So, so it's a little lower. It's a little lower, but uh, yeah, I, I think what we all, when I was there and working, you know, uh, in sports, a lot of teams came in a day early, you know, because I think it's about the acclimation. You know, once you get acclimated, it you're fine. Well, I do know the team is flying out on Wednesday, like a normal road trip, because the game is Thursday. 
Yeah. Um, I was a little surprised. I thought we may be going out on Tuesday, but we are leaving on that Wednesday. Well, night game. And the thing about it, the other games, the NFL games, is that, uh, you know, they're uh, – they usually come in a day early, and anyway, don't they? So yeah, I'll be interested. Basketball. Here's what I can tell you: if you're not used to altitude, be careful about it when you get there drinking the first day. Lots I've of water. Seen drinking people. drinking water or alcohol Out- or yeah. high noons. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know Gator Bank Media was sponsored by High Noon. <laughs> I can tell you this much: new yeah. sponsor, Shane. Yeah, we just got a contract for a dollar tonight. You got a free one. Yeah, it's a dollar. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, all right, so let me just get back to the SEC media days for a second. Alabama is certainly looming over there at the east. LSU is getting a lot of run. Five Bob said today that LSU is getting a lot of support and more than he expected. By the way, as Paul, if he was having problems getting into SEC media days, I think I said this, he said, yes, it was difficult. So there was a little bit of a jump start there, something when it started out today. But anyway, it, it was different. And we're going to get around to the subject of Georgia. Now, there's two things on Georgia. One is the obvious one about three beating. And the other one is there are problems they've got with, 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 with alcoholism or at least with driving under the influence and the kid getting killed and what have you. And it's an ugly thing right now. And it's really become an issue to the point where the University of Georgia is going head to head with the Atlanta Journal and Constitution and uh, demanding a retraction. Papers don't give retractions unless they clearly got it wrong. I don't think AJC thinks they got it wrong. So we'll see what happens there. But on the subject of three-peating, you're the last team to do that? I looked it up. Do you yes. Know Minnesota Golden Gophers. That's yeah. correct. Minnesota Golden Somebody Gophers. Somebody asked on my I – I think I asked that on my show, and I would have never guessed that. I probably would have thought it would have been like – I guess that either. Oklahoma back in the day. That's yeah. what I would have guessed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'd never. Probably, not the Golden Gophers. Dan, one of them guys probably got it, you know, for sure. Shane, can you hold one second? I'm going to do a quick commercial and come back to you okay. and get your thoughts for the other things today. Thanks to our friends at Melton Law. <laughs> Well, I'm joining the band, of course. Since Melvin Law is the official law firm partner of the Florida Gators, I want to help. Dad, we're litigators. Let's stick to helping people in the courtroom. Well, can we still hang out and jam a little bit? At Melvin Law, we won't back down. And thanks to Shane Matthews. Uh, Shane, Sankey, I know you didn't hear it. I don't know what I was expecting today. I don't really get off on those those commissioner messages and stuff. But it is he is the most powerful man in college sports right now, and uh, he he did a lot of the ceremonial things today, recognizing people, the first responders who were helpful, or whatever. And then he I could, was trying to figure out exactly where he was coming from. Depends on what story you read, but he was asking for federal intervention on this whole issue. Kind of surprises me he did that. He, he said, and he talked about it. His, his quote was, it's not about taking away this new name, image, and likeness opportunities. In many ways, it's been a net positive for young people. But we all know there have been stories, promises made, of stories, promises made, but not fulfilled, of inducements offered, but not made, of empty promises, the reality that our student athletes deserve something better than a patchwork through state laws. What do you think you meant by that? Oh, I don't know. That's way over my pay grade. Well, yeah. um, I mean, it's just a different time. You know, I had Hal Mummy on my show today. You oh, know, the yeah. great. Oh, yeah, great offensive man. Uh, yeah, at yeah, Kentucky, the air raid. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, what do you want to be coaching right now? He said, heck, go. You know, it's just, it's rough on these coaches, buddy. I mean, we talked about, and, and I mean, it's great for the player getting paid or what have you. But the whole idea of once you get a kid, once I recruit Buddy Martin or Brendan Martin to my school, back in the day, you're like, okay, we got the players we wanted. Now we focus on other players. But you're constantly recruiting those guys to keep them on, on your roster and not leave. So it's just – it's it's two year-round now, and, and something needs to be done somewhere. Uh, well, I mean, if I take a stab at it, and I could be totally wrong, but – it's not the same in every state as far as the state law is. Well, that's true too. 
concerned. And I felt like that comment was more of, is there going to be any federal oversight that just says, the, you know, you know, federally or, you know, come in and say, this is the law because now you've got, I mean, you know, it's been going on in, in, uh, in, you know, state of Florida now, I think for the last couple of months where, where, you know, different, you know, sort of tweaks to the law have come in and I don't pretend to know what they are, but to me, I think they're looking for sort of a blanket. It's fair for everybody uh, and not different per state. And I, I guess that's where I kind of take it as. I mean, I could, I would, what do you think, buddy? Is that you think that was sort of? I think we're just feeling our way along right now. We don't know what to do. This is it, it, like we said the other night. I was talking to Allie. She said, "College football doesn't know what it is," and that's what we're all trying to figure out. We're just trying to get well, yeah. the next thing. Too to many say, components. Okay. I mean, you've got a, there's too many ways to make money, right, Shane? You with social media. And, you know, what, you know, can they wear a uniform? Can they not? All this stuff. It's it's some of the questions that I asked Scott Strickland last November at a, a luncheon, uh, you know, looking for clarification. And, you know, a lot of it goes, you know, they, you know, they, they're just hoping uh, that, you know, that they kind of cover it and nobody really wants to get in trouble. But, you know, how do you regulate all of this stuff? Because a lot of these kids are showing up you know, with their own giant social media, you know, already, you know, in their back pocket, you know, how do you re regulate a lot of this stuff? And, and, you know, and, and Strickland's answer was, well, a lot of that goes back to the organization or the company doing the sponsorship. So if Coca-Cola is sponsoring Buddy Martin, then it's Coca-Cola's responsibility to regulate and follow the rules. And that was sort of their answer, which again, all of this seems like they're kicking the can. And, you know, the commissioner's, you know, trying, you know, how, how is he supposed to reg or do any sort of regulation when there's not the same rules? I think that's a fair, fair statement, if that's what he meant. Your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't really pay attention. I mean, I, I don't really have any thoughts on it. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's it's way too advanced for me. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but. As Allie stated, college football, I mean, it's all over the place right now. I think just not college football, college athletics. Yeah. 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 Well, they, they settled on the roster today. We had it on uh, Gator Bait. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. um, and, and I guess they said the 84 scholarship, et cetera. Um, looks like they're pulling your things together. You have made some comments lately that may lead me to believe that maybe um, – <clears throat> Uh, maybe there was issues. So, uh, hold on, Tony Barnhart just texted me saying he's got internet issues. Uh, so uh, you 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 you're getting stronger on stronger on merch. You have reason to think he's going to be solid, and they're not going to ask him to do too much. Put. Let me tell you something. He will be in the middle of the pack or better than the quarterbacks in the league. Okay. okay. What? Okay. Because you're the quarterback guru, so I really want to ask. Well, I don't know about that. No way. But I'm a quarterback guru. He's okay. a quarterback. No, but they had face masks. Now that's a different. <laughs> I uh, um, what is his? Have you had to give me like his top two or top strengths and, and maybe one or two one of his weaknesses just off the top of your head? What he's you extremely me? intelligent football wise, and he's accurate. And he's he's more he's more faster than you think. They had him clocked at like twenty three miles an hour the other day, running. Oh, really? Yeah. So look, I, I he ain't gonna be a. This is gonna be a much improved team across the board. Um, but I think so many people on the outside think because you lost a first round quarterback means the team that went six and seven is gonna be worse. I totally disagree with that. Hmm. I think they're gonna be a better football. Now, what are things that he would need to work on, you know, if you had to pick that apart? Well, I mean, I, I really don't know right now. I, I think he's a good football player. I think accuracy. people want to look at – I think he's pretty accurate, though, buddy. Accuracy. He's like a 60-something percenter. Yeah. Um, I think he's a really good quarterback. I could, I could eat crow this midseason, but I, I like him. I think he's going to have a hell of a year. All right, Shane, stand by one second. We're going to go get get this man in here from Nashville, Tennessee. While we got him, <laughs> looks like tennis. Looks like it looks like it is Tony Barnhart, Mr. College Football. Tony, coolest how guy, you doing? Coolest guy ever. Yeah, he just hey, boosted the radio. Hey guys, I'm, I'm having a little internet issue in my room here, but uh, we're we're 
uh, figured out a way to get you get me connected with you guys, and so we go from there. Outstanding. Thank you for doing it. Say hello to Shane Matthews real fast. My man, Shane. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How you doing, Tony? Well, uh, set better, it up for better us. Better than I, I deserve. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I, want, I don't want to lose you. I want to get your take real fast on today's events. We're trying to figure out exactly – what Sankey was talking about in his opening statements. Uh, I, I guess he asked for more federal intervention. I'm not sure. What did you get out of that? I, I thought he was, I thought guys, I thought he was very emphatic about he, he he's looked at all this stuff and he is absolutely a hundred percent convinced that federal intervention is the only answer because without it, what you basically have is every state fending for themselves and they, then they can write the law the way they want it. They they're, say, hey, coach, what do you need? What do you need in this law? We'll write it to suit you, and uh, that is uh, that is the biggest concern. So he, I thought he, I don't, I don't, I, he did not pull any punches to me today. He's very clear that, that there's got to be some uniform standards, and if you can't, you know, and you can't do that on a state by state basis, and uh, but again, you still got to get the legislation passed, but. Uh, I thought he was very, very cl- plain and clear about how he felt about it. Yeah. Uh, we were saying earlier, and I talked, texted with Feinbaum back and forth, and I was telling Shane, there was something about it that didn't feel like SEC media days. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was the heat. Maybe it was that Florida's usually on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, something about it that just didn't feel right. Uh, is it me? Tony, did you feel that way? Well, you know, I, it was it was a it was a busy day. Obviously, it's a brand new venue, and anytime you do that, you you know, it doesn't it doesn't feel quite uh, the same. But I thought, you know, I thought other than an incredible amount of construction that's going on in downtown Nashville, they are completely rebuilding it. It seems, but um, you know, I thought I thought, and plus it's it's a short day. You only have three schools as well, so. Uh, it felt different, but it, you know, I, don't, I, I didn't expect it to feel like uh, Birmingham, and I didn't expect it to feel like Atlanta. It's different. I, I was trying to remember, and Shane corrected me. It's, uh, I thought it was held in Nashville once before, but no, no, no. Okay. It's never Shane was right. Not been in that. My and then they, you guys did see that uh, they announced that next year's media days would yeah, be in Dallas. Yeah, I'm really kind of sad about that. Now here we go. We all these guys now are going to come. All these Texans, and Oklahomans, the big hat, no cattle people are, are taking over our league. Tony, I don't know if I like this or not. Tony. Well, uh, no, you could, you could. Uh, I predicted that would happen a while back. Because the, look, what tipped it off when they remember they were revealed the schedules for twenty twenty four. Yeah. Uh, and the and the main thing was that everybody in the conference was going to play either Oklahoma or Texas. That was that was the tip off right there. That the when the, they came in the league, they were gonna they were gonna host SEC media days in order to, you know, you, you have to take care of your um, your footprint, and so that that was that was totally totally expected. Shane, you want to crack it, Tony? I know you uh, 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 are interested in what's happening in the world of sports. Uh, yeah, I got I got one question for Tony regarding the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, I was always a big fan of Stetson Bennett. I'd, I'd go on Bug Baloo's show, and he's like, they should be playing JT Daniels. He doesn't have enough arm strength. I'm like, look, this dude can do things that you can't coach. Right. Having said that, with Todd Munkin being gone and Stetson ben, Bennett being gone, I know Carson Beck's been there a long time, and we know Georgia's a very good football team. But don't you think – they're going to miss some of what Stetson Bennett and Todd Munkin brought to that team. Uh, Stetson Bennett and Todd Munkin brought uh, uh, a sort of spontaneity. They were both innovative. They made they made things happen that you really can't coach, uh, mm-hmm. and that was Stetson. He just he just the guy just made plays. He knew how to play football, and so that yeah, you 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 could absolutely miss that. And I'm anxious to kind of see where it goes. Uh, Munkin's one of the better play callers I've been around, and Stetson. You, you can't pigeonhole Stetson because he's just a different different kind of guy who knows how to play the game. Yeah. One more, I'll let you go, Tony. Now you got things to do tonight. Appreciate you coming on during the busy night. Sorry about the problems you have with the internet. Uh, all right, three P. Not a word we've ever used around the SEC before. 
It has happened, as we said. Minnesota did it back in the day. Bulldogs got uh, – they got maybe the good a team they ever had, maybe the quarterback situation, although it's, I can't deny it, the quarterback situation turned out with stats a minute pretty darn good. So <laughs> what about this team? What about this environment? What about the competition? Because it looks like a favorable schedule for Georgia and looks like they're going to get their man, the quarterback they want, and we know what Kirby can do. Three Peter or not, Tony? Well, I think it's absolutely possible. I mean, and you're being kind when you call it a favorable schedule. It's an awful schedule. I mean, they, you know, obviously you got the big game against Florida and they go to Tennessee, but overall they, they had Oklahoma on this schedule before they had to take them off. So I, I think it's a very, very, uh, as far as SEC goes, it's a, it's a very good schedule for Georgia. And, and here's the other thing. They've recruited at such a high level. And, and Kirby brought this up last year. He said, yeah, we lost a lot of really good players. But you know what? We're replacing them with a lot of really good players. And this this batch of players was very highly recruited, but they had to wait their turn. And now they're hungry. And so I, I think we kind of overstated sometime. If you've recruited at a high level, you can you can have a continuity in your program. And Georgia is that way now. And so I think they have a very good chance, uh, you know, uh, I, I, th- I absolutely think they're going to play Alabama and not LSU in the SEC championship game. LSU's and got both, a lot of run. But, Interesting. I heard you say yeah, but, a time bomb. Go ahead. Yeah. I just, I just, I've got a feeling about this Alabama team. Nick, remember, Nick Saban's been there since 2007. In the time he's been at Alabama, he's never gone three years in a row without winning a national championship. Good point. And now it happened. And – I think Saban has got his team uh, really locked down, and we'll see. I'm still not convinced that the quarterback is the guy to lead them to the to the promised land, but we'll see. Great stuff from the great Tony well, Barnhart, Mr. College Football. I want to ask, hey, Real Tony, quick, got back to good to talk to you again, my friend. See, Tony and I, sure. friends, I did one of your shows one time. We got to be good buddies. So. Okay. <laughs> did you talk this long and then? Yeah, we talked okay. for like 45 minutes. <laughs> he likes me. Uh, uh, is it at the, uh, is it at, where is the, uh, SEC media days held in Nashville? Grand uh, the Grand Hotel, right on Broadway. Oh, but, okay. So it's not at the convention center then. Tony's ready to go hear some country music tonight. He's going to be singing karaoke. <laughs> there you go. There you go. No, it, it, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful hotel, but they're doing so much construction. Yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to get to, but it's, uh, it's a beautiful and, and Nashville, Nashville's a great town. Great so. town. It's a great town. But they got I know that construction you're talking about. It's a mess down there. Tony, thanks so uh, much, it, my good friend. Uh, go ahead. If you had a final comment, I just want to make sure I get everybody in tonight. Having you on was a pleasure. I hope we can do this more often. I look forward to your reading you and hearing uh, from you and talking to you. Any final comments? Uh, day one down, three more to go. There you go. And it'll be uh, – <laughs> and it's good. Well, here's the thing. Kirby Smart is here tomorrow. Nick Saban's here Wednesday, yeah. and Tennessee is Thursday. So it's going to be uh, – the next three days is going to be interesting. Well, Billy Napier's here on Wednesday, but you forgot to mention that. It's okay. It's, I am it's not the same note, thing. It's noted. Hey, yeah. Noted, Tony, thank buddy. you, buddy. Talk to you soon, brother. Thank you. Bye, Tony. Take, Take care. Tony Barnard, thank you. All right, Shane, I'll give you a final shot, buddy. Who you got on your show tomorrow? Uh, I got Buddy Martin. And oh, I, wait a minute. On- Yes, ah, award-winning Buddy Martin. I got a couple of guests waiting to text back. You know, Buddy, it's that time of the year. People are on vacation. They're yeah. busy doing stuff. I got people media yeah. days. So it may just be me and you tomorrow. That'd be all right with me. But I tell you what, it's that time of year. Yep. Uh, no thank you, Shane. Be well, Y'all my have friend. a good night. Thanks, Shane. The QB, yeah. Shane Matthews, pot up with Matthews. Now right over to – Did you feel like – I feel like Tony, I feel like Tony liked me a little bit more no. than you. This, could talk, like this guy might does. like you a little bit. And the friends are standing by. We'll get in. I like night. his show. Rod Brown. Sidelines. Rod Brown. Rod Brown. Rod Brown. The man. How are you, Rod? Hey, how are you? Sorry we were so backed up there. We had a little bit of a late start. So uh, No, I, I I walked back. We've been down at Bridgestone Arena. Uh, man, they had a, uh, a food. Uh, it was unbelievable. There was so much food down there. And I, I was looking at my uh, phone, talking to a bunch of people drinking a few road sodas and rushed back up the hill. Tony's right. There's so much construction here. It makes Atlanta look tame. And I was in Atlanta last week for a week. So uh, Nashville is a, I live in Memphis, a lot of rivalry in these towns, but damn, they know how to put on a uh, convention and a show. And I talked to Tony Barnhart 
couple of times this morning. He will be the lead speaker August 28th for the Memphis Touchdown Club. So anybody listening, uh, and I'm going to put the word out, that is Mr. College Football. Mm -hmm. You are Ed McMahon and Johnny Carson. I love the two of y'all together, man. Y'all are fantastic. Well, thank you. And by the way, for those who don't know, it's Fran Spirit standing by in the Orange Blue Room. We're going to bring him up in just a minute. But I want to say that Rob is a good friend. He started. We started doing his show, Sidelines, let you say when it is six days a week. We do it Saturday mornings with his cast of characters. Some of the best football we talk uh, is on Rob's show, Sidelines. He, he does a terrific job, and I enjoy doing it, Rob. Tell folks about Sidelines. Yeah, we're, we're a six-day-a-week, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 10 a.m. Central, Sidelines.live. Of course, on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, 18 platforms. But, you know, you, it's not just about one person. It's about the entire group. I go back to Pat Sullivan's Heisman speech in 71. Every coach, every player, every manager, everybody – having you on here and love to get your son Brendan on here because you are the brains and I've learned from buddy. I've learned from you Streamyard at first. How do we do this now? It's as simple as snapping your finger, but uh, love it. And just want to say to you, Brendan, as I told your dad, y'all are in my prayers every day about your mom. I, you. My parents have been married Thank coming you. up on 65 years in November mm -hmm. and y'all are exactly what we love about college football. I don't care who you're a fan of. You'll love the Gators if you watch the Buddy Martin show. No, you got a great right, family. Right, I right. love it. Hey, now, Rob, thank you for saying that. I just want you to know why have I been invited to be on your show? Because I'm because, a loyal fan. Because you talk too much. That's I'm a why. loyal fan. <laughs> Let's go get this guy right here. He's on the show quite often. You know this guy, don't you, Rob? <laughs> he was on this morning. Yeah. The he's world's on, most interesting there. man along with Frank Duffy. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's everywhere. It was a, just like that old Chicken Man show many years ago. He's everywhere. Yeah. He's everywhere. That's oh, France. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How are you, Francis? Another day in paradise, boys. We're running kind of behind. We got started late because of internet problems, and we're kind enough to get these guys working. Rob's at the SEC media days, as you know. Rob, yeah. sum up the day, will you? And tell us what you saw, what you learned. I think the takeaway from the day was, you know, Brian Kelly, year two. Uh, everyone's going to keep asking him until he gets it, the national championship. But the three coaches that preceded him in this millennium, Coach O, Lester Miles, and Nick Saban, all did it. So he's going to have to answer that question until he gets it done. I don't think he'll do it this year, but he's going to have a good team. Takeaway from Eli Drinkwitz at Missouri is he – say something. Say something interesting. He needed to. Uh, nice guy. I like him. But uh, Missouri, I don't think they can get out of the shadows of the Cardinals, mm. the Chiefs, and the Kansas City Royals. And Jimbo Fisher – uh, he was, he was in his usual self. People asked him about recruits and NIL and, you know, I can't talk about it or anything like that. I think the, the takeaway though, was what Greg Sankey said about NIL. He spent a lot of time in his opening remarks. We got to do something about it and we better start doing something about it now before it becomes a bigger problem. Brendan, Brendan, you, you referenced a minute ago, playing kick the can. Can't do that. Can't do that anymore. Well, that's well said. And, uh, uh tomorrow we get, uh, Get Francis' best friend on tomorrow night, the coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. France, what do you think he's going to say tomorrow? No three feet? No, I don't think so. Well, you know, Kirby Smart is uh, – he, he's got a good football program, no question about it. got a great football program. But I, I'm looking at what's going on, and I've seen this happen too many places before. Uh, like, you know, I give Pete, you know, you look at what happened with Pete Carroll there at, at, um, at Southern Cal, you start getting these problems off the field and the program starts unraveling. Now, is it enough that it would happen this year at Georgia? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know about the timing of it, but it, it just seems that it always happens that way of uh, Urban Meyer had you know, had it going through 2008, and then in 2009, Gators were playing very well. They lose, and the program seemed to unravel from that point onward, and it hasn't been the same since then. So I, I look at what's going on there at Georgia, and I got to wonder, once it starts unraveling like that, are you able to stop it in its tracks, and rebuild it to where it is a program that commands mm -hmm. 
respect and not and when I mean commands respect not for what they're doing on the field what they're doing on the field is at a whole different level than what we've seen even with Alabama uh but respect is 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 more than just what's on the field it includes what you do with your entire program for all the all the people want to say about Nick Saban and I've heard him called everything from Nick Satan to to all sorts of other things one thing you don't see is you don't see 300 traffic tickets you don't see 11 sexual assaults you do see this if somebody gets out of line uh, they get they get frog marched out of Tuscaloosa in a hurry and yeah, I give him credit for that. And that's the way it should be. Um, Steve Spurrier did that. You didn't see kids getting out of out of line. You know, you'd see one every now and then, but you didn't see it at massive doses. And I got to wonder, is Georgia at that point where it's starting to unravel? And can you stop it? From All right, unraveling? let me stop you right there. And see, you can give credit to the sponsors who's making this possible. Going to keep Rob around for one more minute or so. Rob, you stand by, and Franz Beard, and Brenda, and I here will talk a little bit of what we expect this week to be like for uh, the SEC. I want to tell you about Titan MRI. Titan MRI is worth the short drive to Gainesville. No insurance, no problem. You can pay with cash or card. Same day scheduling available. If you start feeling better today, Titan MRI is North Central Florida's premier independent MRI facility. Come see why hundreds of patients. Are visiting our Gainesville location for Ocala, Marion County, and the villages. That's TitanMRI.com. Well, tomorrow's uh, is Kirby's day up. We know what that's going to be about. I wonder if, which. How will the questions be divided? Be more about the three peat or more about the problems with the Atlanta Journal Constitution? Rob, what do you think? I think it's going to be more about the Atlanta Journal Constitution and the perceived war on the Georgia football program that they've declared and that's the way a lot of the Georgia fans are the the football part of it'll be easy and he'll want that I think he'll want more of those questions but I I just don't think you're going to stop uh and I like what Fran said Steve Spurrier wasn't a problem um and you know what it's it's there's too much going on for them not to talk about it but uh, uh that's just that's what media days are there, there'll be some tough we need we need both of y'all here we need some tough questions, not by the media, but as you said, buddy, by the well, press. Yeah, it was the press, not the media. We named, we redubbed it, friends. We yeah. no longer on Rob show call it the media because yeah. they don't call it the media box. They call yeah. it the press box. Okay, Boy, right. a there's a you big difference. Really there's a difference in. And Rob and I have thrashed this out. I love it. Media, media is anybody with two followers on Twitter. Press box or people are credentialed, which you are, by the way. Well, I was going to go, but obviously we had, you know, other things happening. Yeah. Whatever. Next year, Franz yeah. and I are going to load up and okay. we're going to drive there. Good. To Dallas. Go today. We want you to go ahead and take off. We're going to go. Franz and I are going to do like we did when we rolled up to Tennessee. We're going to get in the car. <laughs> he doesn't want you driving, though, I can tell you that. Franz can drive. He's a war- <laughs> He's a road warrior, man. Franz will drive for like 12 yeah. hours, no problem. Yeah. Rob, in case cool. you don't know, we went, we went on – in 2009, I believe it was, we went up to Tennessee. No, it was 2008. We went up to Tennessee. And um, I was driving. We kind of had a de- we kind of had a detour because detour. We wind up at the Oconee River right there. Uh, there. Brendan does a U-turn and we puncture a tire and this yeah. guy comes up whose car is held together, honest to goodness, with bungee cords, and his paint is called Basic Bondo. And <laughs> and he comes up there right after that. We're trying to get it in. He says, I'll change it for you. And I'll change it for you. <laughs> and we got that little, you know, the little donut thing. And, and we say, well, where can we get a tire on this thing? He says, right up the road at Billy Bob's or whatever it was. I think we that go was up there, the name of it. Literally pull in the place, and this guy who has a has a Benson and Hedges twelve thousand with an ash that long hanging off of it. We haven't even stopped the car, and he's got the jack under it, and and 
It's like it's like NASCAR. They a cigarette have, hanging off of his lips right there with a long ass show. Yeah. Remember? I mean, it. It, I mean, it was like a NASCAR pit stop. All of a sudden, here they come. Here come the boys, and by golly, they were ready to do all four tires and, instead of just one. Well, what was the uh, best part about that story, Franz? Is that best- we thought he was going to load up some like bad tire for us. We we're going to be you know, busted down the road. He knew we were Gator fans and it ends up being Jim Bob or whatever was a Gator. Well, (laughs) not only that, he didn't have a tire that would fit the van. So we have to drive the back roads of Tennessee on the donut. to when you use the Garmin's. Remember the old Cleveland, Tennessee. Recalculating. Recalculating. We find a firestone that's open in in Cleveland, Tennessee. Cleveland, Tennessee. Steve mm-hmm. Sloan's hometown. And Buddy gets on the phone then with the the rental agency to get them to pay for the pay for the um the vehicle. Now this comes the night after we had pulled into Atlanta and there was a you know every a gas panic going on. And we literally were down to I I think we had a tenth of a gallon. You know, it was a twenty gallon tank. The and gas we is like six dollars a gallon if you could find it. If you could find and it. we found we got in somehow and fit nineteen point nine gallons of gasoline. Yeah. I mean, uh, this this is this was the road trip to end all road trips. Yeah. We get up to Tennessee now. We go in the, the they had the media in a parking garage there by Neyland. And we come walking out there, and we got people saying, "Hey, would you like to trade football coaches with us?" Yeah. <laughs> well, and, I'll tell you what. But it's a little bit of story time, Rob. We'll get you on next time. No, I, I'm, I, that's a great story because the Gators got the win too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We well, did we did. We did get the win, and here's the thing: we get the win. Brendan drives. We got Tim Casey, our photographer, in the very back. John Fenneran. John Fenneran. No, Fenneran. Tim Casey. Was that oh. Casey was on it. Mark McLeod. You, you, me, and Brendan. That was that was the the road well, trip. And, and, and Rob, just so you know, even back then, we were doing streaming. Then on what was Mogulus.com through Gator Country. We were like 2009. We were the only people that were doing streaming back then. We had I had bags of equipment and wires wow. to kind of put all that together. There was no stream yard back then. It was well, like we, did it, from the, we did it from we did it from the Hilton in Sandy in Sandy Springs. We did a show the next. That was morning. a radio show. That was internet radio that night. Remember, Brendan? We did yeah. Internet radio. Well, yeah, because we couldn't get yeah. enough. You know, all we could, the internet in the hotel was like, you know. I think we invented. Bandwidth. I think we invented internet radio that night. I think it's what happened. I think we did too. Yeah. I'll never get Rob's going to go. He's got things to do tonight. <laughs> well, I I'll, wanted to ask. Rob I'll come on any SEC media. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll come on anytime. I, I just love listening. I've got. I mean, this, this is what this is what we're supposed to do is have fun. Well, exactly. Rob, Rob, have you had any good brush ups with like, you know, any any anybody that you know, any head coaches or any getting you no, know? No, Rob's too nice a guy. He doesn't do that. Not brush ups. I, mean, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, I like, talked to Jimbo Fisher. Rub elbows, yeah. I meant to say, with anybody yeah. since you've been there. They're everywhere. I mean, I talked to Jimbo Fisher. Talked to Ben Watson. I talked to Roman Harper. Walked over with Commissioner Sankey, but uh, you know, we were just walking down the street, and you know, he he's there's it's a hoot. Everyone you want to meet. Talked to Gary Danielson today. Got to visit with him. He lives in what Tarpon Springs. He couldn't believe I knew that, but y'all told me on this show. Hmm. So, huh. yeah, look, I love watching this show, being on it, y'all. Anytime I will be on it, y- y- y'all really know what you're talking about. This is a press roundtable, full go. court press. And you're coming press back on Wednesday <laughs> night after you hear from Bill and Avery. You're going to assist. Yeah, him. yeah, and I'll I will get you pictures and video of him. Anything oh, you nice. need, you anything y'all need, I'll do it. Okay. Great. Thank you, know, you Rob. You know, Rob, you know, anytime thank you want to have me on your show, yeah, you know, stop, I'll send you stop, my number. Stop, stop, okay. Stop, you can have stop, me on the stop, show. Man. He doesn't want you. you on know, I, I do want to. Me, I want all no, y'all no, no. call me. Good night, Rob. You, you Good know, night. you know, the thing about it is, is <laughs> See even if you're walking down <laughs> Billy, Billy. <laughs> even hey, if you're now, walking down the street with Sankey, you know, he's always the smartest guy in the room, but I guarantee he's also the smartest guy on the street, too. 
Uh, Greg, you know, I don't know if you guys happened to listen to Sankey this morning, but I heard my gosh, his new, his new talk, most of it. Uh, my gosh, I mean, this guy, this guy, there is a reason why people say he's the say he is the most powerful man, not just in college sports, yeah. but in all sports. Yeah. Uh, and and the reason being intellectually he blows every single commissioner that's out there i mean they, they can you know they can't hold a candle this is like this is like having a, a phd a phd in a room full of, of kids in romper room uh with, well here's with, the thing uh, i don't want him let oklahoma and texas hijack the sec yeah now today the media days next year is in dallas that's fine I see what's coming here. It's going to be a lot of that all hat and no cow talk. Well, you know, here's what's that. going to here's here's what is is going to happen, and I I, I believe this. I I think I, I I don't think we're going to go to New Orleans, and the reason I don't think we're going to go to New Orleans is because of the safety issues in New Orleans these days. But I can see us being in Dallas, Atlanta, Nashville. And rotating and rotating it there, and maybe, may and well, and I think they're going to have to bring it into Florida too. I think you're going to see it in Jacksonville or Orlando or Tampa. Orlando or Ta- Orlando or Tampa. It's going to be Orlando. I think, uh, don't, I, go, I think, don't go over there to Charlotte. They're an ACC country over there. Friends, we're going to and, Dallas next year. I love Dallas. Uh, it's a fun town. Right? Come on, don't yeah, you know you some guys, good restaurants but, there? Yeah. Yeah, buddy was right, Justin. It will be in Orlando. It will be in Orlando within a couple of years because the SEC's got the ESPN, Disney, ABC thing. It will be in Orlando. But yeah. yes, it will days, be in Orlando. The days, the days, and I don't know if they'll go back to Birmingham. Um, they may, but I think they're going. This thing has become such a big event, and the SEC was yeah, the well, first one Orlando's. to do this. And give credit to Roy Kramer on this. Roy, this was Roy Kramer's idea, and nobody had done it. Just like we had this thing called the Sky Riders, which you were part of, buddy. Which there was, there was nothing like the Sky Riders uh, before. There hasn't really been anything like it since then. Yeah. But then along came Roy Kramer, who didn't who thought well okay the skyrunners not everybody could do that but everybody could come to a central city and he started the sec media days yeah. so you look at what at how it's evolved now this is this is the premier college football event of the month of july right let me tell you what else is premier friends and you might be there i know brendan and i on monday august 14th they're going to celebrate the second anniversary of Florida's secret weapon, that Spurrier's Grenade Drill, by the way. What a tremendous job Freddie Weavey's done out there. From 5 oh, to 10 yeah. on Monday, this opens the public, Fund in 14. <clears throat> they, uh, they're going to have a party to celebrate the second anniversary. Uh, they're going to have a buffet of favorites, including filet, uh, shrimp, and grits, drinks, cookies. <clears throat> they give door prizes, etc. And uh, they're going to celebrate the second year of Spurs Grand Grill. We'll be there. And uh, I think if you want to go, it's 66 bucks a head for the whole dinner and everything. Concerning what you get, it's not bad. We put it on the so, company card, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, they're teaming up with Ronald McDonald's Charities, North Central Florida, raised money 11%, get it, 11 of all food sales and 66%, oh, get, get it, marketing. 66 of all beer, wine, and cocktail sales donated to the local charity, assisting families with serious ill huh. children. Receiving treatment at Shan's Hospital. Well, I'll be, I'll be sure to donate to that one. Yeah. Well, you, don't worry about it. I'm paying for your ticket. So there you go. Well, that's okay. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. And getting back to what you were talking about about Oklahoma and Texas, this thing, Texas is a state with 32 million people. You take Texas and Florida together, and you're talking 55 million people right there in, in two states. Um, which is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I think that this is, I think it's a shrewd move. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you, buddy. It doesn't need to be hijacked by Oklahoma and Texas, but this needs to be a, an opportunity for the SEC to get, to have the entire state of Texas embrace the SEC. 
And let's face it, we're adding 11 national championships in football. We're adding, what is it, eight or nine uh, schools with nine Heisman Trophy winners nine between, times, them, man. between them. Uh, this, is a, this is a big deal. And you know why I can say it's a big deal? You look at what, what the Big Ten had to try to do to, to counter it. They bring in, they bring in uh, Southern Cal and UCLA, which can't, can't hold up. They can't compare. They can't bring anything to the table more than what Texas and Oklahoma will bring to the SEC table. Um, you, hey, Fred, totally, you know what my favorite thing about Texas is? They what, really the seeing it on the rear view on your way out? Cute girls What's are that? there. Oh, I thought you were going to say seeing it in the rear view on the way out. <laughs> All right, so since we've made a natural well, pause well, hold here. hold on. Let me handle my own transition there. First of all, I want to say if you like Franz Beard, you should. If you like Buddy Martin, you should. They won't talk about it. Franz writes an incredible blog every, almost every day called Thoughts of the Day and covers all sorts of different things that's going on in Florida sports. Buddy writes always a great column once or twice a week and always checks in. Hey, you can read these guys. Whatever you want, go to www.gatorbaitmedia.com. Subscribe today. Go get yourself the all-access membership before football season starts. Check it out. Also, if you guys are uh, you know, into YouTube or whatever, we launch a YouTube channel. Uh, you can see more of these guys. All you have to do is go to YouTube. You search for uh, uh, the Buddy Martin Show. we got a brand-new graphic, brand-new channel. Check it out right there but in all seriousness these two guys are, are, are a pleasure to read every single day franz works his butt off buddy works his butt off and also i want to tell you really quickly about renstar medical research our, uh, sponsor, our very big sponsor has been sponsoring us since the beginning uh, with proven reputation as a high quality patient-centered clinical research facility renstar medical research brings cutting-edge clinical research trials to Ocala in areas such as Alzheimer's disease, psoriasis, osteoarthritis, that's that word, that's the dyslexia, yeah. migraine and fibromyalgia, along with many other conditions that affect our community. Since its inception in 1998, Rentstar has participated in more than six. Seven. Se oh, that's your edit there. Mm -hmm. Seven hundred plus clinical research trials, and continues to partner with prominent pharmaceutical and biomedical companies throughout the medical industry. Rentstar Medical, medical research, research seeking, seeking tomorrow's, tomorrow's answers to the health, health questions, questions of today. Brands, yeah. take it home. You got two minutes. Well, I'll tell you, buddy. The thing that I was most interested today was I'm listening to uh, the coaches. Uh, yeah, I, I liked Greg. I, and Greg Sankey's uh, address, uh, the state of the SEC was phenomenal. And, it, you know, you can go to the SEC, you can go to secsports.com uh, and, and, and see that if you haven't already. But watching these coaches, um, Brian Kelly, I felt, and I don't know if you felt this in listening to him. He sounded a little more humble than he did last year. And I think, uh, you know, and I think he even admitted that, that he, it was a learning process for him. Jimbo, I think, was a bit subdued. He, I mean, Jimbo's always talkative and everything. But there was none of this bravado of a year ago when everybody was predicting, you know, Texas, uh, Texas A&M, Alabama was going to be for the West Championship. Well, Alabama had a great year. Texas A&M had six consecutive losses after that ball game. Uh, five after more after that ball game. Um, but we look at we we look at that. Then Eli Drinkwitz comes on, and Lord have mercy, please somebody give the boy a personality. He needs one in the worst way. Somebody, somebody, you know. Take him to the hospital, you know, give him, pump him up full of whatever it is, hormones or whatever it is that, that gives you a personality and give him one. But in listening to these coaches, all three of them did, did not come on like, oh, okay, we're going to come in here and kick butts, take names or anything like this. My point being with this, this is a league that will humble you. 
I just I don't care how good you think you are in the SEC. This is a league that will humble you. Uh, it, it's one of the things I point out about Georgia coming through. Georgia's trying to three-peat here. And as Tony pointed out, they got all the ingredients to be sensational. They really do. But it's a league that will humble you. Just when you least expect it, you go in there and you have that game that nobody expects. I'll give you a perfect example. 19... 19- 81 uh alabama is, is riding the riding high on this big long win streak and everything like this and they go into they go into stark into um jackson mississippi and mississippi state beats them six to three whoa you know that people didn't expect that at all that's the kind of thing that happens in this league when you don't expect it the, the game that you that you never thought would happen, like Ole Miss in, 19, in 2008. Did anybody in his right mind think Ole Miss was going to come into the swamp and beat Tim Tebow, uh, Tebow and the Gators? Now, from that moment, think about what happened. You know, the, the promise came and Florida literally became an unbeatable team after that. But Florida was very beatable that day. And, and this is the thing that I took away from these coaches. They all three sounded very, very humble. And I think it comes from the understanding that this is a league that will bring you to your knees. This is a, bring, a league that will lower you to the lowest common denominator. When you, just when you don't expect it, it will happen like that. And, and, I, and I think that's going to be a, a, an ongoing theme for the next three days with with media days is i i don't i i'm not expecting any coach to get out there and yuck it up or or anything like that we're not going to have a robbie caldwell moment like we had when he became the vanderbilt coach like about three days before media days and he went up there and did his like why am i here what am i doing here uh and and we had no answer for that question either but uh well it's time to eat humble pie if you want to join in uh, SEC, getting ready to have yourself a dose of humble pie. Good stuff from Franz Beard, as always. Franz Beard, skaterbaitmedia.com. Subscribe today. Better read them. You will know what's going on if you don't. Thank you, Francis. Thanks, Franz. Is that is that Sammy's uh, toy? This is Buddy's horn. This is how I regulate me Buddy. crazy. crazy. <laughs> Thanks. I thought that's what you did to call Sammy. I know. We got to make sure he stays in. That's our problem. For sure. All right, right friends. Night, Love night. you, friends. Have a good night, buddy. Love you All guys. Right. Take care. I uh, want to say a quick shout out tonight to the GNK. See my yeah, shirt? I'm about to. Yes, we all Gator there. Nation Kingdom. Who's got one of those? Who? I don't know. Let's see. Look at this. What is this? 15th? What was this say? 15th? Yeah. Tebow. It's Tebow. That was the, I don't know when we put these out. Right, right when this came out. Found this old school yeah. T-shirt. I don't know. There's probably only a hundred, maybe a hundred of them out there. Let's have an old there. GNK shirt now. You want to? Yeah. Hashtag GNK. This is the Gator Nation Kingdom. That's uh, one of the better groups that we uh, run, and uh, the Warriors. official group, our favorite group. A lot of very interesting, influential people out there. Check Grass it out Street. on Grass Facebook. Street. Yeah. Uh, you can try to join, but the admins are pretty tough on you. You like that? Yeah. Love it. All right. Love that horn. Uh, I, but I, and my announcement is that I'm going to try, I'm going to be probably in here more often bothering you to do the show Good. I like more that. often. So Good. there's that. All uh, right. Beer of choice after my high noon was this awful low calorie IPA called yeah. slightly mighty. That was in your fridge. Yeah. And I believe my brother-in-law, Jeff Dubeck might be responsible for that. I'm going to blame him. I'm having mine warm milk. Good night, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thank you.